Hi everyone and happy Tuesday. Not tracklist Tuesday, but happy Tuesday. I did say last week I would do a video on what is inside my viola case, so here's this video. Um, for those of you who have seen me play or have seen my viola case, it's very, very um, noticeable. Um, and anyway, um, it's a really cool case and um, I kind of like jazzed it up a little bit, but like on the outside, but then also in the, on the inside is pretty cool. What all I keep with me and like what all I have in, inside as well, I'll show you some of those and I'll tell you a little bit of a story about my viola, Aguila. So first, my case. That is right, I personalized my case. Yeah, I had um, some wooden letters that I used for like a board that I made for my high school graduation party. And so what I did was I just put the block letters on there and then I just took black spray paint and just went at it. And um, I like how it came out. That's when I said, um, if last week, if you could pick me out of a crowd with my viola case, this is how. Apart from the fact that it's already red, it's also kind of jazzed up with the whole Rizwan on it. And now we are going to dive inside. This will involve a little bit of moving of the phone camera, so don't get dizzy, just let you know. Okay. So this is the inside of my case. I have three bows, as you can see. This is my Chagas, D Chagas bow. I got this in Washington, D.C. Uh, the summer right after I bought my vi this viola that I'm currently using. This is a viola made by a, a, a bow made by Kilin Zhan, the same maker who made my viola. And then this is a... Um, K Holst fiberglass bow I bought it just because it was cheap it was festive and it makes a pretty decent outdoorsy bow and it's light so if I'm playing some fast stuff I can use it, it makes a pretty clean sort of easy even sound so it's an okay thing and I have uh, some pictures inside here as well this is and actually all three of these are autographed pictures this is with uh, me this is me and uh, Nicola Benedetti uh, Scottish Italian violinist and probably one of my favorite musicians out there um, very good player and very beautiful too. Um, I saw her twice in Dallas, so this was the first time I saw her. I took this picture with her. Second time I saw her, I had her autograph and she thought it was really cool. Similarly with this next photo of me and Hilary Hahn. Probably one of the most technically accurate uh, performers I've heard to date. And then, um, same thing, autographed picture. You can't really see... Meh. And then this is um, Istvan Polanyi. He's... Um, a Hungarian violist who um, came to my school for some uh, concerts and some teaching uh, opportunities at, um, when I was my final year in undergrad and I had um, three lessons and a master class with him. It was my first master class actually. So I just thought that was a really cool opportunity and I wanted him to, uh, I got a picture with him after the master class and I wanted him to autograph it as well. So I keep it in there just sort of like mode of inspiration and people that constantly encourage you to work hard. In addition to my uh, sort of inspirational musical figures that I keep mentioning in all my previous videos and things there. Now on to the other part of the case. Um, this is a viola bag. I got this made by a woman named Sarah Craner. Originally to protect my viola in my old case because the, um, the cloth from the old case would leave marks on the viola. And this kind of does the same unfortunately as I discovered. So I kind of just use this to sort of hold things. Um, the storage space in this case is, is okay. So this is, um, I have my shoulder rest bag that came with my shoulder rest as a Kuhn Bravo. And in this I have some strings. I have uh, old strings and I have to keep a new set with me too. So right now I have some old Eva Prazi Starks and um, a new set of Abogados with a Larsen A. So I keep this around with me. I haven't been using it much um, just because a lot of it is local. Thus me and from, from one place to another. So I haven't always kept this with me. Probably need to keep it more and then sometimes if I'm feeling sweaty or if I um like if I shave and I have like the lotion on there afterwards um I like to use a cloth preferably don't like using cloth and then I also have this thing which you can put on your chin wrist and then tie it underneath with a rubber band and I only really use this on occasion I don't keep it on the viola I know some people do keep it on their instruments but um I just prefer not to because I like the feeling of the wood it's easier to grip on there now the big unveil. This is my baby. Her name is Aguila. And um, a very, very special story behind this instrument. Um, she turned six this year. Oh my gosh, like so many 
six references to six. Signature six, 2016, six is my lucky number because I'm born on the 6th of January. Regardless, and she's turning six. Um, so funny thing about this viola, this viola is made by Kaylin Zhang. It was made back in uh, 2010 and it's first owner. And um, I was playing on a viola by him a long time ago as well. It was a student viola. And I had uh, got a scratch on it and the varnish kind of like, you know, came off a little bit on some place. So I took it in and I'm like, hey, I need the varnish repaired on this. And then he's like, well, it's going to take me a day to do it. And I told him, I'm like, I still need a viola to use. <laughs> he gave me this one to use for 24 hours. And it was literally love at first sight, sound, touch, play, everything. This was everything I wanted in an instrument. Um... It was made brand new and it sounded amazing. So needless to say, when I had to give the viola back to get mine, I cried like a baby. I am not kidding. I threw a tantrum. I threw a fit. This was like, this was six years ago. I mean, I was a junior in high school. And I was also at the same time looking for a new instrument. So like my parents were like, you know, let it go. Don't worry about this instrument. Like, you know, you'll find another one. I'm like, no, instruments are not like cars. You will find a Nissan Altima with a red exterior and black interior. You will find five of them. You will not find five violas that sound like this or play like the way you want them to play. I'm very picky when you come to when it comes to getting an instrument. A lot of times you'll have a bunch of instruments by one luthier and only one of them will sound the way you like the sound. So it's even a matter of luck at this point. I got very lucky finding this instrument. It's a very special one to me. And the, when I ended up getting it, I was on the verge of becoming an Eagle Scout. And so after I had finished my paperwork for my Eagle Scout project, which pretty much means once you do the project, you just have a conference. You have two conferences, the Scout Master Conference and the Board of Review. Um, and that's essentially when you become an Eagle Scout. So once I had done the project paperwork, I'm like, I'm, I told my, and, I, and they told me that you will um, get a new viola when you become an Eagle Scout. And so I told my parents, I'm like, okay, that's fine, but the viola is going to go away. So I told the salesman, uh, Mr. Zhang, that like, you are not showing this viola to anybody. This is going to be mine. Give me two months. So in two months from the time I first played the viola, I got to get it after getting my Eagle Scout paperwork. And that's why its name is Aguila, because Aguila is Spanish for eagle. And I'm absolutely in love with this instrument. It's like... As my friend always says, muggles don't understand because they non-instrumentalists don't understand the attachment that one has to their instrument. It, it really is my baby. Um, it sounded amazing when I first got it. It's been growing. Um, first two years was a little bit hard to sort of get the sound I wanted. Then it hit a good peak two years afterwards, two, three years after. And then now I feel like it's getting another growth spurt because of this baby. This is a Freer's tailpiece that is meant to enhance the lower register and sort of make the tones even of the instrument. I love this thing. And it also helped reduce my F sharp wolf tones. I highly recommend this to anyone, violist or cellist, even a violinist who has wolf tones or wants to just get a different sound out of their instrument. This is definitely the way to go. And um, and I feel like now because I put this installation, I've installed this on here, it's going through another growth spurt, which I'm excited to see how it's going to continue changing. But the coolest thing about this viola is not actually the front, as pretty as it is. The coolest thing about this viola is this part. The back. And these are all sort of natural parts of the wood. Um, I don't think he put these in there, but it just looks really, really cool. Really, really pretty. So I always say it's like, if it's, if it's a very special instrument, not only just because of its sentiment development, but it's a very pretty instrument and it sounds really good. So that's... That, and that's my baby. So if anybody's seen my videos, and if anybody uh, follows me on Facebook, I always post videos, pictures of like my viola dressed up in a something. And it's like, that's the attachment out to my instrument. <laughs> it's very important. Next I have my shoulder rest. This is a pretty high profile shoulder rest. Anything, like, you could pretty much tell when I have a shoulder rest on because of how it is. I have like some, uh, it's a Kuhn Bravo. And um, I like the shape without the sponges, but it doesn't exactly sit well. I kind of have to use a lot of extra effort on my shoulder, so it just doesn't work for me. So I have some sponges on here just to make it a little bit more ergonomic, and I don't have to, you know, scrunch neck, shoulder, oops, <laughs> and have any issues with tension. So I just rubber band some sp cosmetic sponges that you can get at, like, any makeup store. Guys, if you feel embarrassed about taking uh, about getting going into a makeup store, just take your shoulder rest with you. <laughs> that way, people don't judge you. But I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, and then um, I have rubber band, elastic bands attached to it. That way, um, once I attach the shoulder rest to the viola, I put the rubber bands on. That way, the viol the shoulder rest doesn't slide out. And if it by any chance were to deta detach while I was playing, the rubber bands hold it in place so it doesn't fall down. This is a trick I learned from one of my friends who learned it from his teacher. 
and then I learned, and then I saw my teacher learned it. Then I took lessons from one teacher who learned it from his teacher as well, and I ended up taking lessons from her. And so they all have the rubber bands on their shoulder rest to sort of hold it in place, and they all have a lot of them have the sponges as well. And it's definitely helped me with all my helped with reduction of uh, like shoulder neck issues. I'm probably gonna make a video about um, sort of chin rest, shoulder rest stuff. Anywho, uh, I always keep some rosin, very important for your bow. Um, I have two in here, both by Pirastro. One's Obligato and one's Ava. One's, this one's a lot more sticky, so it really grips into the string. This one is a lot more smooth. I like to have a balance of both because this isn't really good to use if you're going fast on things. This is good as an all-purpose rosin, but I kind of like a blend of the two. That way I can really get a good sort of uh, out of the instrument. And it gets this really nice sort of tone that I really, really like. At the instrument. Almost Strad-like, as, as I would say. And then I have a few other things in here as well. A little cleaning cloth. Um, a tuner. Always trust cord. I use a cord. I have... Um, Let's see what else I have in here. I have mutes galore. So if you ever played with me and you needed a mute, you can pick from two. <laughs> I have a practice mute as well that I like to use at night whenever my parents are sleeping. Unfortunately, this viola still projects like a beast even with this on. So sometimes I don't even use it because I just don't like the tone that it creates. Um, I always keep extra rubber bands. I've always had rubber bands snapping on me. And then I have extra coon feet for the shoulder rest. I haven't had to change them yet. I've been using these for about six, seven, six years now. So I haven't had to change them yet. And then I also have a chin rest screw. As you can see, a chin rest screw, a, um, some peg compound, which helps your peg slot, um, turn easily. If they get sticky, it's a good thing to use. Otherwise, a good alternative is chalk. I have a, an extra fine tuner in here as well. Sometimes I use it for the D string because, um, I don't know, on this instrument, the D sounds temperamental even when it's in tune. So sometimes I use the fine tuner and just keep these things on me all the time. So that wherever I go, I'm prepared. And um, if I just show you how the case looks like on the outside, it's a nice little snug fit for the instrument. And uh, this is actually a single size case. So this is a size 16 viola, so it's in a size 16 case. I don't plan on upsizing my instrument. If I get it, I don't think I'll get another instrument. I love what this one is giving me. Um, and I feel like it's giving me more every single day. And for the sake of my shoulders, I don't want to get a bigger size instrument. Even though the tone will probably sound good for the sake of physical health, no. But um, yeah, this is my, what all is in my viola case and the viola case and the viola. I always like to share the story about the viola just because it's so special. And um, next week is actually Track List Tuesday and it's gonna be a piece by Lindsay Sterling. And um, it's, she writes the music for viola as well, but there's a trick that I did with this one. So stay tuned for next week's Track List Tuesday. And until then, happy Tuesday.